All right. Well, thank you, everybody. Welcome uh, to this public meeting of the Standing Committee on Economic Development and Environment. This is our review of Bill 39, Environmental Rights Act. This is a clause-by-clause -clause review. And uh, maybe to uh, get us started, I'll ask Mr. O'Reilly to start us with a prayer. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. If you wish to experience peace, provide peace for another. If you wish to know you are safe, cause another to know that they are safe. If you wish to understand seemingly incomprehensible things, help another to understand. If you wish to heal your own sadness or anger, seek to heal the sadness or anger of another. Dalai Lama. Thank you, Mr. O'Reilly. This time, for the record, I'll also ask the uh, committee to introduce themselves, and I'll start on my far left. Uh, good afternoon. Welcome, uh, everyone. Herb Nakamak from the Nakboot. Good afternoon, Kieran Test, our member for Cam Lake. Good afternoon, Danny McNeely Satu. Kevin O'Reilly, Fring Lake. Welcome once again. My name is Corey Vanthine, MLA for Yellowknife North, and I'm the chair of the Standing Committee on Economic Development and Environment. I also want to introduce our staff with us today. Our, far, on my far left is uh, Sheila McPherson, our law cl clerk. On my immediate left is uh, Stephen Dunbar from our research department. And to my right is uh, committee clerk Michael Ball. Today, uh, the Standing Committee on Economic Development and Environment is holding a public clause-by-clause -clause review of Bill 39, Environmental Rights Act. Bill 39, Environmental Rights Act, proposes to change the existing legislation by protecting people's rights to a healthy environment, help ensure the GNWT always considers how the environment could be affected, and investigate when a person reports to the minister that someone has harmed or could harm the environment. Gives residents of the NWT tools to help the GNWT protect the environment. The GNWT must write a report every four years on the state of the NWT's environment, which will be reviewed by the Legislative Assembly, and allow time for public comment. Bill 39, Bill 39 received second reading in the Legislative Assembly on February 26, 2019, and was referred to the Standing Committee on Economic Development and Environment for review. The committee sent letters inviting input from an extensive list of stakeholders, including municipal and indigenous governments in the Northwest Territories, as well as a number of non-governmental organizations and stakeholders. The committee traveled throughout the territory and held public hearings in Fort Smith, Catalodici First Nation, Hay River, Fort Providence, Bechico, Inuvik, Norman Wells, and Yellowknife. The committee thanks everyone who attended these meetings or provided written submissions on Bill 39. There are copies of the bill available at the back of the room. Committee would like to thank the Minister of Environment and Natural Resources and his staff for the collaborative approach on the review of the bill. And I will now invite the Honourable Minister of Environment and Natural Resources to introduce yourself and your staff for the record and proceed with any opening remarks you may have. Minister McLeod. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon to, to committee. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm pleased to have the opportunity to provide information to committee on Bill 39, the Environmental Rights Act from the Department of Environment and Natural Resources. At the table with me today, I have uh, Dr. Joe Dragon, Deputy Minister of Environment and Natural Resources. Dr. Aaron Kelly, to my left, is the Assistant Deputy Minister of Environment and, uh, environment and Climate Change. And Ms. Sherry J. Rock, our Legislative Council. Supporting us in the back, we have uh, Mr. Robert Collinson, my Ministerial Special Advisor. Ms. Diep Diong is our Director of Environmental Protection and Waste Management. Mr. Rohan Brown, Legal Counsel. Mr. Seth Bonet is the Manager of Legislation and Legal Affairs. Ms. Christine Glowich is Project Manager of Legislative Initiatives. And Ms. Kelly Fisher is the Environmental Protection Advisor. This bill takes steps to modernize and broaden the existing Environmental Rights Act in the Northwest Territories. This bill provides broader rights to request an investigation, including clearer timelines and responsibilities of the minister, prosecute a of offense, bring forward an action, and protect employees who have engaged in processes under the Environmental Rights Act. The bill also requires the Executive Council to prepare a statement of environmental values and requires departments and select public bodies to consider that statement in their decision making. Environment and Natural Resources has developed the bill through a partnership process with a technical working group that comp comprises Indigenous governments and organizations. 
Valuable input was also received from the stakeholder advisory group, public engagement, consultation with Indigenous governments and organizations, and other GNWT departments. The department appreciates all comments and recommendations provided through the committee process and looks forward to providing answers to the committee's questions and concerns. Mr. Chair, this concludes my opening remarks. Thank you. Thank you, Minister McLeod. Over to committee. Does committee have any general comments or questions before we begin the clause by clause review? Start with Mr. O'Reilly. Uh, thanks, Mr. Chair. Yeah, I would like to acknowledge that the bill does improve the Environmental Rights Act, uh, it does extend the basis for investigations in court action to include acts or omissions. Um, but there's a significant harm test that's imposed, uh, and we're going to talk about that. Um, there is a statement of environmental values, as the Minister said, and stated the environment reporting. Um, but I want to make it clear that this is not a rights or obligations based approach. Um, you know, 149 of 193 countries in the world now have some form of constitutional recognition for environmental rights. Canada is not one of those countries, and certainly the Northwest Territories is not a jurisdiction that has done this either. And I don't believe that this bill is going to accomplish that either, but uh, um, I recognize that there's going to be some improvements made in the bill, and we're going to talk about those. Um, but I, what I want to do is uh, take people back to um, what was discussed in the stakeholder advisory group uh, those were public presentations, and uh, there were uh, reports from those meetings, and those were made available to me. Uh, they didn't come from the department, but uh, um, I did review those in preparing for today's clause-by-clause -clause re review, and there's a number of things that were discussed and, and might I dare say, promised, and they included an environmental registry, uh, methods to propose policies, programs, agreements, and initiatives, uh, from the public, uh, even with a public comment period, by posting them to a public registry, um, and that uh, in some cases the department or the minister might be obligated to respond to those proposals. There was to be a definition of healthy environment, a right to a healthy environment in, in, in the legislation. There was to be public trust uh, 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 defined uh, and an obligation placed on our government to. Uh, uh, carry out activities, I guess, to protect and maintain a healthy environment. There was to be dispute resolution provisions where there was an environmental dispute. Uh, the minister might invoke uh, or, um, uh, mediation or some kind of dispute resolution. Uh, investigations were going to be carried out by inspectors initially rather than the minister and, and or his staff. So I'm just wondering, can someone explain to me why those concepts uh, that were promised in the uh, public consultation uh, that, that took place around the bill, why they were not incorporated into the bill. Thanks, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Ms. Uh, Dr. Kelly. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The process for developing our legislation was a partnership approach that included a stakeholder advisory group but also a technical working group process. So much of the information that came at the stakeholder advisory group meetings went back to the technical working group and there were discussions <coughs> about them. For example, we discussed the environmental registry and uh, it was felt that residents of the Northwest Territories will be able to access environmental information through the GNWT open government policy, departmental websites, and in particular the land and water board registries. We also are anticipating an amended Environmental Protection Act which is anticipated to be introduced into, into the 19th Legislative Assembly, which will most likely include a registry. So we had discussions about duplication. Some of the other items uh, that have been brought up were discussed um, at the technical working group meetings, and it was determined that they were not needed in the, in the legislation. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Further, Mr. O'Reilly? Uh, thanks, Mr. Chair. Um, okay, uh, that's an explanation. Um, of what took place. I still believe that the sort of things that were promised could and should have been incorporated uh, into the, the bill, but we, we're left with a bill that only makes, I think, some marginal improvements. But uh, um, I would like to uh, note that this bill's been in place now for 29 years. It's been used four times. 
um, where requests for investigations were made and only in one case was an investigation actually carried out and it was one that I <laughs> I brought forward with uh, another individual back in 1991. Um, so if it's only been used four times in 29 years, um, what's the problem here and, and how can we improve people's understanding, knowledge and maybe even use of the uh, Th this uh, piece of legislation. Thanks, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Dr. Kelly. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, improving the use of the bill and the understanding of the bill could take place through ENR's website and um, uh, hopefully through the registry that will be developed under the Environmental Protection Act. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Anything further, Mr. O'Reilly? Uh, thanks, Mr. Chair. Yeah, um, I think committee may have some ideas and recommendations in the report on the bill to uh, support broader knowledge of this because if we're making all these changes and it's not going to improve people's understanding or use of environmental rights, at least as set out in the in the bill itself, what's the point? Um, I just, for the record, Mr. Chair, that there's a number of other things that this bill can and should have done. Um, a number of jurisdictions, I mentioned how 149 of 193 countries have incorporated uh, environmental rights in one way or another into their constitutions, and that comes from a Canadian expert, uh, Dr. David Boyd, uh, who studied this and did make a, a submission to the committee as well. Um, you know, there could have been uh, some consideration of the rights of nature. I, I understand that that was reviewed and considered, and it was felt that it was not necessary but I think we should think about that again. Uh, investigations could have been carried out by a, th a third party, an independent party, uh, Commissioner of the Environment, or uh, perhaps even the Ombud and so on. Um, there's very few government obligations in here. I, I recognize that there's a statement of environmental values, um, uh, but it's not clear how that's actually going to be implemented and what kind of public reporting there's, uh, will take place around that. The idea of a registry, I'm glad to hear that that may still be alive. I think it's a way that we can actually uh, help our citizens better understand uh, important environmental decisions and uh, policies. And uh, um, I think we may even be able to save money by uh, combining a number of the other registries that uh, have been suggested in some of the, the bills that this committee has been looking at. Um, so uh, I don't think in any way that this represents best practices or uh, where we can and should be. Uh, I do recognize that there's some marginal improvements in this bill and we're going to talk about making some further improvements today, but I don't think this is what was promised. So uh, I'll leave it at that for now. Thanks, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Take that as a comment. Any response to the comment? Seeing none, comment noted. Next I have Mr. Testar. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and I'll just I'll speak generally to um, to Bill 1339. Um, this bill is um, it takes the form of amendments to the Environmental uh, Rights Act that was passed in 1990 and brought forward as a private member's bill by uh, Brian Lewis, who was the member for Yellowknife Centre at the time. And um, interestingly enough, this is very precedent-setting le precedent legislation when it was passed. It was the first Environmental Rights Act of its kind to be passed in Canada, and the first private member's bill to be passed by the NWT Legislative Assembly, um, which is uh, an achievement in its own right in setting precedent, because this isn't just a, an aspirational holiday-setting piece of legislation. It actually affords new uh, opportunities for citizens to um, uh, ensure they have the ability to deal with things in their environment that they think are problematic for them. And I think what we've seen with this bill is taking a private member's bill and transitioning it into a public bill. So it has more linkages to how the, the government's environmental regime is currently set up. It has more linkages to the bureaucratic structure of the GNWT. And I think that was the overall intention of the bill in its final form. Um, what I learned from our hearings with the public is that the expectations out there were that this would be a rights-based exercise and that the the, where the dial has moved in 2019 is there's an expectation from citizens that the concept of a right to a healthy environment is something that governments need to respond to, either through constitutional amendment or through uh, policies and legislation that addresses that, that fundamental right. 
I don't think that Bill 39 is a rights-based exercise. Again, I think it, it was more of a transitional uh, or more giving a private member's bill more of a place within the overall GNWT structure. And in that regards, I think it works very well. It's a much needed improvement, but it still leaves that question of how do we enshrine uh, right, a right to a healthy environment with suitable legislation and policy framework. When the committee put its mind to how could we tweak the bill, we proposed a few ideas, but ultimately the, m the most fundamental changes that would ensure that that right is, is um, enshrined in how we do business in the Northwest Territories couldn't be done because it's really out of scope with Bill 39. Um, so I hope that we keep thinking through this and future governments put their mind to developing new legislation that does come from a rights-based exercise and, uh, and ensure some of these fundamental concepts are brought into place in the Northwest Territories. We, we made history in 1990. I think we can do it again. Um, and we should, but we need to make sure we're, our, our goals are very clear when we, when we set our mind to that. So I do support the bill, and I think we've worked w collaboratively as a committee with the government to improve upon it. Um, but the, <coughs> as my colleague um, from Frame Lake said, the, the, the real issue here is how do we deal with uh, the stuff we couldn't do. And I think it, the government should, uh, should take that up. Um, and think about that in its future planning because the citizens who, who approached us were very excited about that prospect and want to see something like that brought forward. So it's a really good priority and I think your department is well positioned to act on it. Thank you. Thank you. Take that as a comment. Any reply to the comment? Minister McLeod. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. We appreciate the member's comments. Okay. Thank you. Comment noted. Further comments from committee? There's no further comments from committee. Does committee agree to conduct a clause by clause review of Bill 39, Environmental Rights Act? Agreed. All right. Thank you, committee. We will defer the title of the bill until the end and begin with consideration of the clauses. There are 24 clauses in the bill. Please turn to page four of the bill. If committee is ready. Clause one, does committee agree? Mr. McNeely. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I move that Clause 1 of Bill 39 be amended in the definition land resources and self-government agreement by brackets A striking out or at the end of the English version of subparagraph brackets A, brackets V, brackets B striking out the semicolon at the end of the paragraph brackets B and substituting or and brackets C adding the following after brackets after paragraph brackets B and number C bracket C any prescribed le le legally <coughs> binding agreement thank you mr. chair thank you mr. McNeely the motion is in order to the motion uh, Mr. O'Reilly. Yeah, thanks, Mr. Chair. So th what this motion actually does is uh, broaden the, the definition of uh, land resources and self-government agreements consistent with the definition that's been used in a number of other pieces of legislation, uh, including the Protected Areas Bill that came from this department, um, to allow the minister to uh, prescribe other kinds of agreements that uh, meet the intent of... Uh, uh, land resources and self-government agreement. I'll, I'll give an example. The Daycho Interim Measures Agreement could be prescribed in, and included in here. So uh, it's just to make this legislation consistent with uh, the other bills that this committee has seen. Thanks, Mr. Chair. Thank you. To the motion. Question, Question has been called. All those in favor? All those opposed? The motion is carried. Does the minister concur with this amendment? Yes, Mr. Chair. The Minister concurs with this amendment. Thank you, Minister. Committee 2, Clause 1, as amended. Does committee agree? Agreed. Thank you. Committee Clause 2, does committee agree? Mr. Testart. 
Thank you, Mr. Chair. I move that Bill 39 be amended by deleting Clause 2 and substituting the following. Two, the purposes of this act are A, to protect the right of the people of the Northwest Territories to a healthy environment. B, to provide the people of the Northwest Territories with tools to exercise their right to protect the integrity, biological diversity, and productivity of the ecosystems of the Northwest Territories. C, to ensure that the government of the Northwest Territories carries out its responsibility within its jurisdiction to protect the environmental rights of the people of the Northwest Territories. And D, to ensure that the government of the Northwest Territories carries out its responsibility to make environmental information accessible to the public in a reasonable, timely, culturally appropriate, and affordable manner. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Testart. The motion is in order. To the motion. Mr. Testart. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, the purpose of this amendment is uh, to strengthen the, the purpose statement, and we, we did hear from a number of uh, residents in our public consultation that um, the, so, uh, there needed to be um, uh, a clearer way to ex for the act to operate. And the point of a purpose statement, unlike a preamble, which is aspirational, is when you're seeking to interpret the act, if there's for a question about how it works, is you can come back to the purpose statement and receive guidance. And I think this, this is a stronger purpose statement than, uh, than what is currently contained in the act. Thank you. Thank you. Further to the motion, Mr. O'Reilly. Yeah, thanks, Mr. Chair. Yeah, I, I, I want to uh, agree with my colleague, the, the member from uh, Cam Lake, that this is about clarifying the purpose and intent of the, the legislation. And uh, um, I want to thank in particular, recognize the work of Professor Linda Collins, the University of Ottawa, who made a submission, uh, a detailed submission on the bill um, and made suggested that it be improved by clarifying the purpose of the bill. Um, what this does is uh, move us marginally closer to a rights-based approach by uh, uh, removing the the restriction or the uh, in the two-way in the in the bill uh, around the the means provided in this act. So it's it's a little bit broader. Um, creates a little bit more of a, a duty on the government to uh, um, carry out its responsibilities under the the legislation in, in the new 2C. And 2D in, in this motion is, is actually something new in terms of the purpose of the uh, legislation in, in ensuring that, uh, or moving us towards uh, um, making environmental information more accessible uh, to the public. So uh, for all of those sorts of reasons, uh, I will support the, uh, the motion and uh, look forward to the minister's support as well. Thanks, Mr. Thank Chair. Thank you. To the motion. Question has been called. All those in favor? All those opposed? The motion is carried. Does the minister concur with this amendment? Yes, Mr. Chair. Thank you. The minister concurs with this amendment. Thank you, minister. Committee, two clause two as amended. Does committee agree? Indeed. Thank you. Jason, sorry for the delay. All right, then, um, committee further to clause two as amended. Mr. McNeely. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I move that clause nine of Bill 39 be amended by adding the following after subclause brackets number two. Brackets oh. two. One moment, Mr. McNeely. Apologize.
Okay. Committee is good. All right. Then just to reconfirm, uh, this is uh, the minister concurs with the amendment. So thank you, Ms. Minister. So once again, committee to clause two as amended. Does committee agree? Great. Thank you. Clause three. Does committee agree? Thank you. To clause four, does committee agree? Thank you. To clause five, does committee agree? Thank you. To clause six, does committee agree? Thank you. To clause seven, does committee agree? Thank you. To clause eight, Mr. O'Reilly. Thanks, Mr. Chair. I move that uh, subclause eight one of Bill thirty nine be amended by striking out any adult resident and substituting any individual resident. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. The motion is in order to the motion. Mr. O'Reilly. Thanks, Mr. Chair. Yeah, the effect of this motion is to uh, open up access to uh, investigations as, as infrequent as they, their, those requests may be over the last 29 years. During the, the committee review of the bill, uh, the point was made that the current wording only allows people of 18 years of age and, and older to uh, request an investigation. So in a way to try to encourage our youth to uh, understand and better exercise the environmental rights that the uh, age restriction it was recommended to us that we get rid of the age restriction. And so that's why the, uh, the uh, wording has been changed to any individual resident. And it's my understanding that that would also allow for organizations to request an investigation. But uh, uh, in any event, I think the intent here is to improve access to the uh, investigation process, and I support it. And we, we had this recommended to us. Thanks, Mr. Chair. Thank you. To the motion. Question. Question has been called. All those in favor? All those opposed? The motion is carried. Does the minister concur with this amendment? Yes, I do, Mr. Chair. Thank you. The minister concurs with this amendment. Thank you, minister. Committee to clause eight as amended. Does committee agree? Mr. Nakamayak. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, I move that subclause eight brackets three of Bill 39 be, be deleted and the following substituted brackets three. An application under this section must include the statement by the applicant and the applicant believes that the facts alleged in the application are true. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Motion is in order to the motion. Mr. O'Reilly. Thanks, Mr. Chair. The way the bill had been drafted was to include uh, wording around uh, corporations and directors. And uh, so this would have allowed uh, corporations to uh, uh, request investigations and uh, the wording in other parts of the bill uh, was not consistent, so in an effort to provide some consistency, um, and committee was of the view that perhaps corporations should not have the ability to request investigations, so to make the investigation process more consistent, this change is uh, being recommended by committee to uh, make it available, the process available to individual residents. Thanks, Mr. Chair. Thank you. To the motion. Question. Question has been called. All those in favor? All those opposed? The motion is carried. Does the minister concur with this amendment? Yes, I do, Mr. Chair. Thank you. The minister concurs with this amendment. Thank you, minister. Committee, to clause eight as amended. Does committee agree? Okay. Thank you. Clause nine, Mr. McNeely. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I move that subclause nine brackets two of Bill 39 be amended by striking out, striking out um, the minister considers necessary and substituting are reasonably necessary. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. McNeely. The motion is in order to the motion. Mr. O'Reilly. Thanks, Mr. Chair. So the, the purpose of this motion is to um, provide a little bit more guidance to uh, how the minister um, is going to determine whether to carry out an investigation or not. So it does raise the bar slightly, but it, it just creates, I think, a little bit more rigor around the minister um, considering all the facts 
um, and so on uh, around whether to carry out an investigation or not. It was this amendment was suggested to us by uh, uh, Professor Linda Collins, and the committee thought that it was worthwhile. And I understand the minister department is probably agreeable, so uh, I, I support this. Thanks, Mr. Chair. Okay, thank you. Further to the motion. Question, Question has been called. All those in favor? All those opposed? The motion, sorry, the motion is carried. Does the minister concur with this amendment? Yes, I do, Mr. Chair. Minister concurs with the amendment. Thank you, Minister. Committee to Clause 9 as amended. Mr. McNeely. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I move that Clause 9 of Bill 39 be amended by adding the following after subclause brackets 2, brackets 2.1, in determining whether an alleged act or omission has been caused or is likely to cause significant harm to the environment, the minister shall consider the following factors. Brackets A, the magnitude of the effect. Brackets B, the ge geographical area of the effect. Bracket C, the duration of the effect. Brackets D, the degree of re reversibility of the effect, brackets E, the nature of the effect, brackets F, the likelihood that the effect will occur, brackets G, the sensitivity of the receiving the environment, brackets H, any other factors that the minister considers relevant, taken into account the purposes of this act. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. McNeely. To the motion, uh, Mr. Testart. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, so one of the, the issues we uh, committee identified in its review was this idea of significant harm and how to, uh, how to how to reasonably understand what significance means in in that regard and how it would play out in an investigation. So the purposes of this amendment is to lay out uh, factors for understanding significant harm. Uh, so it's very clear in what uh, what al alleged, um, how you connect an act with an offense, essentially. Uh, so I think this, this was based on public feedback and advice we've received, and I think it clarifies this issue of significance uh, in how the legislation will operate in effect. Thank you. Thank you. Further to the motion, Mr. O'Reilly. Yeah, thanks, Mr. Chair. I, I my colleague, I think, has most of that right. <laughs> I'll just clarify a couple of points. Um, the uh, bill, uh, the current act, there is no significant harm test uh, that's set out in the current act. So this is something new in the act. I recognize that the um, basis for uh, investigations and uh, prosecutions, right of action, um, have been extended to not just uh, uh, emission of a contaminant, but uh, or potential emission of a contaminant, but to any act or emission. So um, I think perhaps the department in preparing this wanted to provide some way to balance off that that um, improvement to uh, or broadening of uh, the ability to uh, request investigations by bringing in this significance test. And we did have uh, identified to us by several of the sub in several of the submissions that the problem was uh, that uh, there was no way of uh, providing a definition or a test around significant harm. So committee did some research in this area, and uh, we had uh, a couple of helpful papers. One by our law clerk, uh, and a couple uh, sorry another one that I brought to committee's attention by. Uh, a um, couple of individuals that I know, uh, Alan Ehrlich and Bill Ross in 2015, an award-winning paper. And then the review board, uh, McKenzie Valley Environmental Impact Review Board itself has developed some guidance around significance in its uh, uh, environmental impact assessment guidelines that uh, I found particularly helpful. And so we, we worked with a guidance uh, prepared by the, the review board which shows the value of the co-management system, I'll add as an aside, uh, and modified that a little bit to create this, this list of things that the minister uh, shall consider in making a, determina 
deter a determination around significance. And the, so the importance of this is that the minister has to determine whether s uh, an environmental effect is significant or not before an investigation is carried out. Uh, and uh, in the uh, use of uh, s the statement of environmental values, and we're going to deal with that issue a little bit later in the bill, but uh, um, the, the, I think this is helpful. It will help the, the minister in, dis, in the future in deciding how to determine significance. And uh, uh, I think it's a great improvement. Uh, and I want to give credit to the review board. Thanks, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Further to the motion? Question. Question has been called. All those in favor? All those opposed? The motion is carried. Does the minister concur with this amendment? <coughs> Yes, I do, Mr. Chair. Thank you. The Minister concurs with this amendment. Thank you, Minister. Committee to Clause 9 as amended. Mr. Testart. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I move that subclause 9, brackets 3 of Bill 39, be amended by A, striking out the semicolon at the end of the English ver version of paragraph A and substituting OR, B, deleting paragraph B, and C, renumbering paragraph C as paragraph B. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. The motion is in order to the motion. <laughs> Mr. O'Reilly. Thanks, Mr. Chair. Look, uh, sorry, I feel an obligation to tell the public what we're doing here because we spent a considerable amount of time reviewing the bill, uh, considering the, the submissions we got. Uh, we did have it brought to, brought to our attention that uh, there's a number of grounds upon which a minister, the minister can decide whether to pursue an investigation upon request uh, and they include things whether uh, like whether it's frivolous or vexatious and the original 93b said uh, that the alleged act or commission is not serious enough to warrant an investigation the committee felt that the significant harm test was really the most important thing and this issue of whether it was not serious enough to warrant an investigation was already covered by uh, the significant harm test, so uh, we've recommended that the original 93 be deleted and because um, it's already dealt with. Thanks, Mr. Chair. Thank you. To the motion. Question. Question has been called. All those in favor? All those opposed? The motion is carried. Does the minister concur with this amendment? Yes, I do, Mr. Chair. Thank you. The minister concurs with this amendment. Thank you, minister. Committee to Clause 9 as amended. Mr. Nakamayak. Well, thank you, Mr. Chair. I move that subclause 9 bracket 6 of Bill 3 be amended by striking out 90 days and substituting 60 days. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. The motion is in order to the motion. Question has been called. All those in favor? All those opposed? The motion is carried. Does the minister concur with this amendment? I do, Mr. Chair. The minister concurs with this amendment. Thank you, Minister. Committee 2, Clause 9, as amended. Mr. O'Reilly. Thanks, Mr. Chair. I move that uh, Bill 39 be amended by adding the following after subclause 9, bracket 7, new bracket 8. If the minister declines an investigation under subsections 3, 4, or 5, or discontinues an investigation under subsection 3 or 4, the applicant may at any time within 45 days after receiving notice of the decision of the Minister appeal to the Supreme Court by A. Filing a notice of appeal with the Clerk of the Supreme Court and B. Serving a copy of the filed notice of appeal on the Minister. Uh, brackets 9. Subject to this section, the rules of the Supreme Court apply to an appeal under subsection 8 with such modifications as the circumstances require. Brackets 10. Unless the Supreme Court orders otherwise, the decision of the Minister continues to apply pending disposition of the appeal. Bracket 11. After an appeal, the Supreme Court may A, confirm the decision of the Minister, or B, set aside the decision of the Minister and order the Minister to Roman numeral 1, reconsider the decision, or Roman numeral 2, conduct or continue the investigation. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. The motion is in order to the motion. Mr. O'Reilly. Thanks, Mr. Chair. That's a lot of words <laughs> to explain uh, uh, that uh, we had a number of submissions about 
the minister making decisions around investigations uh, under this bill and people had pointed out in their submissions that there didn't seem to be a right of appeal. Of course, the right of appeal always exists even if it's not written into the bill. The committee suggested that it be written into the bill. This was the language suggested by the department, so that's why it's here. If it was me, I'd probably do it a little bit simpler and just say if there's a right of appeal to the appropriate court or something, but I'm not a lawyer. We'll leave it to the lawyers to draft it, and this is what they came up with. So, But uh, I, I do think it's important that people in reading the bill understand that what the process is for filing an appeal and I guess this does it. Thanks Mr. Chair. Thank you further to the motion. Question. Question has been called. All those in favor? Thank you. All those opposed? The motion is carried. Does the Minister concur with this amendment? Yes I do Mr. Chair. Thank you. The Minister concurs with this amendment. Thank you Minister. Committee to Clause 9 as amended. Does Committee agree? Agreed. All right. Clause 10, Mr. Nakamayak. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I move that Bill 39 be amended in, the, in that portion of subclause 10 brackets 2 preceding paragraph brackets A by striking out 90 days and substituting 60 days. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. The motion is in order. To the motion. Question. Question has been called. All those in favor? All those opposed? The motion is carried. Does the minister concur with this amendment? Yes, I do, Mr. Chair. The Minister concurs with this amendment. Thank you, Minister. Committee 2, Clause 10, as amended. Does the committee agree? Great. Thank you. Clauses 11 to 16. Does the committee agree? Great. Thank you. Clause 17, Mr. Uh, McNeely. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I move that Bill 39 be amended in the portion of subclause. 17 brackets 1 presiding paragraph brackets a by striking out statement of environmental values and substituting draft statement of environmental values thank you mr chair thank you the motion is in order to the motion mr o'reilly uh, thanks mr chair so th the effect of this motion and the, the, the next uh, couple that will follow is to uh, basically create a process for the statement of environmental values to go through a, uh, a public review uh, with a, an opportunity for the public to comment on a draft and that what we committee felt was that it was important to, to provide opportunity for the public to comment on that uh, statement of environmental values in fact we had a request from the Sawtooth Secretary Incorporated to allow them to have some input into that statement of environmental values and these these changes will accomplish that so in trying to look for a process to allow for public comment on the statement of environmental values the committee just <coughs> looked further down into the bill there's a, a public review process for the uh, state of the environment report that is proposed in the bill so we just lifted out those provisions and uh, thought that it was appropriate to apply those to this, uh, the development of this statement of environmental value. So that's what these next uh, set of emotions really are uh, aimed at uh, putting together. Thanks, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Further to the motion? Question. Question has been called. All those in favor? All those opposed? The motion is carried. Does the minister concur with this amendment? Yes, I do, Mr. Chair. The Minister concurs with the amendment. Thank you, Minister. Committee to Clause 17 as amended. Mr. Testart. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I move that Bill 39 be amended by adding the following after subclause 17 brackets 1. 1.1. In preparing a statement of environmental values under the section, the Executive Council may consider the following principles. A. The precautionary principle that if there is a threat of significant harm to the environment, lack of complete scientific certainty is not to be a reason for postponing reasonable measures to prevent that harm. B. The polluter pays principle that a person who 
causes an adverse effect on the environment is responsible for taking remedial action and is to bear the costs of that action. C, the principle of ecological sustainability and the, that the integrity, biological diversity, and productivity of the ecosystems in the Northwest Territories are to be protected, maintained, and restored. D, the principle of intergenerational equity, that it is important to meet the needs of the current generation without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. E, the principle of environmental justice, that there is to be a just distribution of environmental benefits and burdens among residents of the Northwest Territories. F, the principle of sustainable development, according to which development must meet the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. G, any other principles that the Executive Council considers relevant, taking into account the purpose, purposes of this Act. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. The motion is in order to the motion. Mr. Testar. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. So these, these are the, the principles I, I just read out in the amendment are the commonly accepted principles of environmental, in environmental law, the things like polluter, polluter pay, intergenerational equity. These are, again, uh, becoming very commonplace in how we consider um, uh, the sound principles of how to develop environmental uh, protection and environmental values for public bodies and for general society. Um, and we felt that in uh, assisting the government in preparing its statement of environmental values that's going to kind of lay out the broad overarching policy of, of environmental principles for the entire GNWT, that these uh, principles be enshrined in the legislation. Um, this is not prescriptive. Of course, any other principles can be brought in, uh, but we uh, felt that this was a great way to, to show um, that these commonly accepted principles are going to be part of how we make decisions. So I think this is a, a really great way to provide that kind of guidance, provide that kind of certainty that they are in play, and to enshrine it in the legislation. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Further to the motion, Mr. O'Reilly? Yeah, uh, thanks, Mr. Chair. I, I again want to acknowledge the uh, submission that we received from uh, Professor Linda Collins, where she did bring these principles to our attention. And we looked at various ways to try to incorporate them into the bill. And we felt that probably the best place was uh, in terms of the development of the statement of environmental values. So um, I want to recognize the work of uh, our staff with the committee and the, uh, the staff of the department in working collaboratively to develop this uh, list. Um, and I think it's, it's, an, a, it's a, an important improvement to the, the bill. I recognize that and want to congratulate everybody for working together. If I had one thing to quibble uh, with uh, on the, the amendment, I would prefer that the word may up top would be changed to shall. But uh, uh, let's see how this works out. And I look forward to. Uh, uh, being around for a few more years to figure out uh, or see how this is actually going to be implemented and th th these are used in practice and uh, the important decisions our government has to make around environmental matters. Thanks, Mr. Chair. Thank you. To the motion. Question. Question has been called. All those in favor? All those opposed? The motion is carried. Does the minister concur with this amendment? Yes, I do, Mr. Chair. Thank you. The minister concurs with this amendment. Thank you, minister. Committee to Clause 17 as amended. Mr. Testart. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I move that subclause 17 brackets 2 of Bill 39 be deleted and the following substituted. 2. The minister shall A. Give notice to the public that the Executive Council has prepared a draft statement of environmental values under subsection brackets 1 and B. Provide residents of the Northwest Territories with 90 days in which to offer comments and ask questions about the draft statement. 3. Notice to the public under subsection brackets 2 must include A. The text of the draft statement of environmental values. B. A statement of the manner by which and time within which residents of the Northwest Territories may offer comments and ask questions about the draft statement. And C. Any other information the Minister considers appropriate. 4. Within 150 days of the end of the notice period set out in paragraph brackets 3 brackets B. A, the Executive Council shall finalize the statements of environmental values, and B, the Minister shall, Roman numeral uh, I, prepare a 
written summary of comments received from residents of the Northwest Territories and how those comments were considered and Roman numeral two give notice to the public of a the final statement b the written summary prepared under paragraph b and c any other information the minister considers appropriate five the executive council may from time to time amend a statement of environmental values prepared under this section six subsections one to four apply with the necessary modifications to an amendment of a statement of environmental values under subsection five thank you mr chair thank you the motion is in order to the motion mr o'reilly uh, yeah, uh, just quickly, this just duplicates the process for uh, the uh, State of the Environment reports, provides the public an opportunity to comment on the uh, Statement of Environmental Values. And I want to thank the SATU Secretariat Incorporated for uh, bringing forward their submission, indicating that they wanted to have a, a role in development of that statement. So this, uh, these changes will ensure that they have that, that ability. Thanks, Mr. Chair. Thank you. To the motion. Question. Question has been called. All those in favor? All those opposed? The motion is carried. Does the minister concur with this amendment? Yes, I do, Mr. Chair. The minister concurs with this amendment. Thank you, Minister. Committee to Clause 17 as amended. Does the committee agree? Agreed. 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 Thank you. Clause 18, Mr. O'Reilly. Uh, thanks, Mr. Chair. Before I go into the motion to amend it, I do have uh, a couple of questions I'd like to ask the minister, uh, if I can. Go um, ahead. So this clause in the bill is about how to put into effect this statement of environmental values. Um, once it's developed, and we've now set out a, a public process for doing that, um, and some principles around how that's to be developed, I'm just wondering, can someone tell me how um, this s statement of environmental values is actually going to be uh, implemented because the wording in section 18 as it is currently is you know shall take every reasonable step to ensure that, that the statement uh, uh, is considered whenever decisions that might significantly affect the environment are made by the department or body so can someone explain to me how they anticipate this uh, statement of environmental values actually being used. Thanks, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Dr. Kelly. Thank you, Mr. Chair. It will be applied um, to decisions and uh, to determine uh, whether there's a significant, once, uh, excuse me, it will be applied once it has been determined that there might be a significant effect of a decision. And um, that will be as per Section 18, which comes from the Ontario Bill of Rights. Um, and is very similar to that and is uh, parroted in the new bill from BC that has the same provisions. Thank you, Mr. Chair. All right. Thank you. Further, Mr. O'Reilly? Uh, thanks, Mr. Chair. That's, that's helpful. Um, so how is the determination around significance going to be made? And um, yeah, thanks, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Ms. Uh, or sorry, Dr. Kelly. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. It will be made by the minister or the deputy minister. Thank, thank you. you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Further, Mr. O'Reilly. Thanks, Mr. Chair. Yeah, I, I get who's going to make the decision. Uh, and I think, um, but is there a set of criteria? Or what On what basis is significance going to be uh, determined? Thanks, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Dr. Kelly. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, just like the other jurisdictions, uh, a decision would be looked at, and it would be, and um, discretion would be used to make the decision about whether it might have um, effects on the significant effects to the environment, and if so, the statement of environmental values would um, would be applied. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Anything further, Mr. O'Reilly? Yeah, thanks, Mr. Chair. I, 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 Okay, I, I can accept that, but it just sounds like there doesn't seem to be any criteria, any uh, uh, any um, checklist or something in, in, that the minister or the uh, department head is going to use in implementing that or deciding whether something is uh, significant or not. So uh, we're going to get to that, I guess. Uh, um, and then I guess I'd like to know... Um, 
how is anybody going to be a how is a member of the public MLAs how is anybody supposed to know how this statement of environment or of environmental values is actually used or implemented um, is there any kind of uh, reporting that's going to be done how will anybody know whether it's actually been implemented in some way thanks mr. chair thank you dr. Kelly thank you mr. chair um, as per the legislation it will be applied and um, at this particular moment in time there is not a reporting structure in the legislation the same as in Ontario and in BC there is no environmental legislation at this time environmental rights act in Canada that requires reporting because of the onerous um, nature of that and the capacity challenges that it would produce thank you mr. chair thank you anything further mr. O'Reilly yeah thanks mr. chair so um, if we're going to go to the trouble of making preparing this statement of environmental values there's a, a re legal requirement now to use it in decision making how's anybody supposed to know if it's actually happening or not if there's no public reporting around that sorry that's more of a rhetorical question mr. chair I just want to put that out and get it on the record and I think that uh, there's some ideas here that we are going to present in terms of providing some help guidance around uh, uh, how to make that determination on significance and uh, secondly about uh, making sure that uh, the public knows uh, that uh, it's actually being used in some manner so I just wanted to get those questions out of the way mr. chair I want to move forward with uh, uh, an amendment on uh, section 18 if I may um, I move that uh, bill 39 be amended by a renumbering clause 18 a sub clause 18 1 and striking out minister of a department or and substituting <coughs> minister of a department referred to in paragraph 17 1 a or the in that renumbered clause and 8 uh, B uh, adding the following after renumbered sub clause 18 1 uh, brackets 2 for the purpose of subsection 1 considering whether a decision might significantly affect the environment the minister or deputy head shall consider the factors set out in paragraph 9 2.1 a to H thanks mr. chair thank you uh, the motion is in order to the motion to the motion mr. O'Reilly so uh, sorry it's a it's a complicated motion but what this actually would do is earlier today we talked about some criteria around defining uh, significant harm to the environment and what this clause proposes is that those criteria around defining significant harm and if I can go back to where those were laid out in an earlier amendment that the minister uh, actually concurred with they included things like reversibility and duration extent and all of those sorts of things and I can't just put my fingertips uh, on the, uh, the motion as it was passed but uh, what this does is uh, uh, just say, suggest that those should be uh, the criteria that are used in implementing um, the uh, statement of environmental values so I would I think this is actually a helpful amendment in, in providing some guidance and how that determination uh, can and should be made uh, moving forward so um, if the the minister is not able to concur with this I'd like to have a better understanding of how that significance determination is going to be made thanks mr. chair sorry th this was in a motion three that we had talked about earlier things like magnitude of the effect geographical area of the effect duration of the effect and so on so I think this is a helpful uh, motion in uh, ensuring that uh, the statement of environmental values is uh, implemented in a, in a systematic fashion and that there's a set of guidelines around how, how it's going to be implemented in decision making similar to what we did in terms of investigations thanks mr. chair thank you anything further to the motion question, question has been called raise your hands high all those in favor all those opposed okay the vote is tied so 
pursuant to Rule 66.3 of the Rules of the Legislative Assembly, as Chair of the Standing Committee, I will cast the deciding vote and may state the reasons for my vote. Unlike members who cast votes according to their own views, I will vote in a manner which maintains the confidence of committee in my role as an impartial chair. The general principle applied to these situations is that the chair votes to maintain the status quo. In this case, that means voting to leave the bill in its existing form rather than causing it to be amended. This leaves open the opportunity for further debate at Committee of the Whole. As a result, I vote against the motion and the motion is defeated. All right. Committee 2, Clause 18. Committee agree? For the purposes of moving along, committee agree? Thank you. Clause 19, Mr. O'Reilly. Uh, thanks, Mr. Chair. Um, I move that uh, Clause 19 of Bill 39 be amended by A, striking out and at the end of the English version of paragraph D and substituting a semicolon, B, striking out the period at the end of paragraph E and substituting and, and, C, uh, adding the following after paragraph E, F, the steps that were taken to prepare or amend a statement of environmental values under section 17, and G, the steps that were taken to ensure that a statement of environmental values prepared or amended under section 17 was considered in decisions where required by this act. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay, thank you. The motion is in order to the motion, Mr. O'Reilly. Thanks, Mr. Chair. So the current uh, act um, lays out uh, the requirement for uh, tabling of a report in the Legislative Assembly. Um, it's a very limited uh, in scope report, it's supposed to cover things like investigations, prosecutions, actions, uh, disposition of any monies received, convictions. Um, we didn't do all that well in, in making sure that those reports were filed, but they, they're now up to date. Um, it's a very limited uh, set of things. If we're going to the trouble of uh, um, including changes or making changes to this legislation to require the uh, the development of a statement of environmental values, um, I think it's only appropriate that we amend the reporting requirements so that the public understands why or what happens with a statement of environmental values. So the effect here of F uh, is to uh, include in that annual report uh, some basic information about uh, uh, the, the, the uh, uh, preparation of this uh, uh, statement of environmental uh, values, any attempts to amend it, and, and then secondly, the, the steps that were taken to actually implement it. Um, I don't think that this requires a lot of work. I think the expectation of committee, or, and certainly myself, is that this would be a high level a description of how the statement of environmental values has actually been used in decision making. Um, you know, uh, perhaps when uh, um, decisions go to the FMB or cabinet, there might be a, a new uh, section in a decision paper outlining what the uh, the effects of the environment might be. I don't think this has to be an exhaustive, nor does it would it be required that it be an exhaustive. Uh, discussion of every time uh, an, a decision was made and that, well, how the uh, a determination was made around um, environmental significance. So uh, I think this reporting requirement is a reasonable thing to uh, uh, suggest. Um, it's consistent with our open government policy and accountability. Um, and if we don't really include it, how does anybody know whether it's actually being done? So uh, I look forward to uh, hearing from the department um, and I tried to get this through questions earlier if uh, we're going to go to the trouble of making this uh, statement of environmental values how does anybody know how it's actually being implemented if there's not a requirement to actually report on it so that's what the purpose of this amendment is and uh, if the department the minister can't concur with it I'd like to have an understanding around uh, um, why they can't concur and uh, how the public is to know whether the 
the statement of environmental values is actually being used. Thanks, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Further to the motion? Mr. Testart? Thank you, Mr. Chair. And um, this is a motion that was brought forward by committee, and I do support it. Um, I do have sympathy for what we heard earlier from, from the officials at the witness table that, you know, the, the an exhaustive process where every government decision would have to be analyzed and, and reflected, uh, reflect the environmental statement of values is not what committee is after. And I think it's unrealistic to even have that expectation, and that's certainly uh, not what I interpret this statement to, or this amendment to require. Uh, it's more or less, you know, show your work. It's nice to have the statement of environmental values, but to give certainty to the public, let's reflect on how it was used. Um, and further, you know, if we're going to create this, which will be an exhaustive process, and we know how hard the department works on, on things like this and how much research they do, looking at different jurisdictions, looking at um, the state of play of our environmental uh, regulation, the aspirations of our people, the input of in indigenous governments, like, that's a lot. Uh, so if we put the time into building that, um, I think it, it shows the value of that exercise by showing how it plays out in government decision making. And having that high level overview, I think, gives comfort that, you know, nobody's wasting their time here. This is a very valuable process, and it's a process that we can point to and say, this is why we're doing it, and this is how it's affecting. And I wouldn't want to put, uh, again, that kind of exhaustive pressure on any of our public servants because they have enough work to do and we certainly expect them to do a lot of work uh, when we drive legislation forward. So uh, in, in that respect, I think the, the intention of this is, is very much um, uh, not to, to create an undue burdensome amount of SAP capacity. It's just to create a sense of how is this used? How is it, how is it benefiting the Northwest Territories? And, and most importantly, how is it benefiting the public's interest in uh, the right to a healthy environment. And I think it's, it's uh, very well measured and very well constructed, and I do support it. Thank you. Thank you. To the motion. To the motion. Question. Question has been called. All those in favor? All those opposed? Okay, once again, the vote is tied, and so pursuant to Rule 66.3 of the Rules of the Legislative Assembly, as the chair of the standing committee, I will cast the deciding vote. And sim similar to my, the previous instance, I vote against the motion, and the motion is defeated. Committee 2, Clause 19, to move forward. Agreed? Thank you. Clause 20, does the committee agree? Clause 21, does committee agree? Clause 22, Mr. Nakamayak. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I move that Bill 39 be amended by adding the following after Clause 22 um, regulations. 22.1, the Commissioner and Executive Council may make regulations setting out legally binding agreements for the purpose of uh, definition land, resources, and self-government agreement in section number one. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. The motion is in order to the motion. Question. Question has been called. All those in favor? Thank you. All those opposed? The motion is carried. Does the minister concur with this amendment? Yes, I do, Mr. Chair. Thank you. The minister concurs with this amendment. Thank you, Minister. Committee 2, Clause 22, as, amend as amended. Does committee agree? Thank you. To Clause 23, Mr. O'Reilly. Uh, thanks, Mr. Chair. So I move that Bill 39 be amended by adding the following immediately preceding the heading, uh, preceding Section 23, uh, Review of Act uh, 22.2 brackets 1. This Act must be reviewed by the Minister within 18 months after the commencement of the 20th Legislative Assembly Two, the Minister shall table in the Legislative Assembly a report on the results of a review conducted under subsection 1 at the earliest opportunity. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Okay, the motion is in order. To the motion, Mr. O'Reilly. Thanks, Mr. Chair. Um, I fully recognize that <laughs> there's been a number of bills that have been brought forward lately where committees trying to build in um, opportunities or uh, uh, requirements in some cases for review. 
And uh, I confess this is another one where uh, committee initially at least supported this. And uh, what this would do is require uh, uh, sometime in 2025, six years down the road, that the minister, future minister, uh, review the the bill, and that that uh, the results of that bill be tabled in the in the legislative assembly. So, um, I think that the value of this is uh, shown by uh, the fact that this bill has been in place 29 years. This is the first time it's actually ever gone through a comprehensive review. Um, I earlier in my opening remarks I talked about how a lot of things were promised in this bill and they were not delivered, things like the environmental registry, a method for the public to propose uh, ideas, um, opportunities for the public to comment on items in the, the environmental, uh, put into the environmental registry, uh, uh, definition of public trust, dispute resolution, uh, investigation by inspectors. Those things weren't delivered in this bill. Um, I also talked about how this bill is not reflective of best practices in terms of environmental rights. It's not a, a rights-based uh, approach uh, that also might set out some obligations for the, on the part of the department. It doesn't provide for independent investigation. There's no rights for nature uh, in here. Um, I also recognize that this is an evolving field. Uh, and we've seen this uh, over a period of time, certainly recently, with the, the rise in uh, interest in the environment and what's happening to our planet. Um, so I think this, I know that this, this has been put in here to uh, ensure that there's a, a place where there, in the future that there's a, a, a check place where there's going to be consideration of the need to improve it further. Without that, there's no guarantee that it will happen. It might be another 29 years before uh, this bill is ever reviewed again. So this is a one-time only review, and I think it recognizes the, uh, the facts that things were promised but not delivered. This is not best practices. There's, this is an evolving field, and it gives an, uh, some assurance that there's going to be a, a future review of this uh, at the minister's discretion, of course. The minister will conduct that. Um, so uh, one-time review, I think it's a reasonable thing to uh, uh, include uh, uh, in uh, moving forward with this bill. Thanks, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Next I have Mr. Testart. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, and I, I agree with the mover on, uh, on the rationale for this, although I'm, I'm not as critical of the bill before. So as I said, I think this is, for what it was designed to do, I think it was been, has been very successful. But the thing that, that I think the expectation that was created is it would do a bit more and towards that rights based exercise. And in my general comments, I mentioned that I think this is an important issue the department should flag and advise uh, the, the 19th Assembly that you know this is an area that people want to look at. What this amendment does is a one-time review that puts that on the agenda for the uh, uh, 20th Legislative Assembly. Um, and again, because there was a lot of, ex and by, by that point, we'll have presumably, if everything goes as, as planned, there'll be a, a new, an updated Environmental Protection Act, there'll be the Water the Waters Act will come into place, a lot of the devolution environmental regulatory stuff will be in place. So we could take another look at the ERA, the Environmental Rights Act, and how it connects with all of that, and to see if it can be improved again and be a real rights-based exercise. So I think the timing is right. Um, I, uh, you know, I think it, any assembly can make whatever it wants a priority, but given there was such great a great deal of public interest in in making this a rights-based exercise, um, committee felt strongly that this is this is something that should be put on. And it's not an ongoing review. It's not a stat review every five years. It's a one-time review. Um, and it's specifically as a placeholder to address those public concerns. Because we don't want to let the, the people who took their time to come out engage the government in their working groups and their consultations and engage this committee. We don't want to let them down by saying, you know, what you wanted can't be done, so hopefully it gets done in the future. This, this ensures that, uh, that there's at least a review that can take those considerations into account. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. To the motion. Further, Mr. O'Reilly. Thanks, Mr. Chair. Um, I just uh, want to signal to the minister and his staff 
there's three motions that committee <laughs> has not uh, allowed to go forward and I want to signal to the minister and his staff that I will be bringing these forward on the floor of the house and committee of the whole and I'm happy to work with the department and his staff uh, if there's any uh, openness or willingness to uh, make some further improvements and I think these are reasonable things so I just want to signal to the minister my my willingness to work with him and his staff to uh, arrive at something that uh, although committee may not support this that I'm happy to work with the minister and his staff to try to uh, make these improvements to the bill and I'm open to doing that thanks mr. chair okay, take that as a comment comment noted to the motion uh, Mr. Nakamayak. Thank you, Mr. Chair. You know, I, looking at this, you know, it seems like um, imposing uh, on what maybe the next government, who knows, who, um, you know, departments, indigenous governments can bring this up at any time, just like um, other things like the midterm review and other issues like that. I think this is um, just adding extra work, and who knows what the next government's going to feel, so I um, don't feel the need to support this. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay. Thank you. To the motion. Question. Question has been called. All those in favor? All those opposed? Okay, thank you. Again, the vote is tied pursuant to Rule 66 3 of the Rules of the Legislative Assembly. As Chair of the Standing Committee, I will cast the deciding vote. And similar to the previous instances, I vote against the motion, and the motion is defeated. Clause 23. Does the committee agree? Thank you. Clause 24, does the committee agree? Agreed. Agreed. Just one moment. Mr. O'Reilly. Thanks, Mr. Chair. I'd like to ask the Minister, uh, when does he anticipate this Act coming into force? Thanks, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Minister McLeod. Right away. Okay, thank you. Nothing further. Clause 24, committee agree? agree. Sorry, uh, just one moment. Thank you. Committee, we will now uh, return uh, to the preamble, which can be found on page 3. To the preamble, does the committee agree, Mr. Testar? Thank you, uh, Mr. I, I don't have an uh, issue with the, with the preamble, um, but there, there was some confusion expressed by various people in the context of this bill and other legislation around why is there a preamble in this uh, legislation compared to other bills that were brought forward? And we have heard evidence from various departmental officials as well that there's a policy to not use preambles, and then so we were very surprised to find this. Uh, so can... Can we uh, understand the rationale of including a preamble when there seems to be a government-wide policy to move away from, from preambles and legislation? Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Kelly? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, through discussions with the Technical Working Group and Stakeholder Advisory Group, we had discussions on um, preamble and, and what people would like to see in this piece of legislation and what specifically they would like to see in the preamble. You'll notice that some of the uh, concepts um, and principles that uh, were provided are actually reflected within the preamble as well. It all comes from the work that the technical working group did together and the stakeholder advisory group. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Further, Mr. Testart? Um, so I'm, not, I'm, sure the, I'm sure the department isn't in a position to answer this, but I'm just wondering if, if we're likely to see or if future governments are likely to, to rely on preambles or is it going to be kind of a case-by-case -case basis depending on input from things like technical working groups? And if there are any D Department of Justice officials here involved in drafting, perhaps they could answer as well. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Minister McLeod. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, my uh, understanding or my belief is that the uh, Department of Justice uh, are the ones that determine that. Thank you. Thank you. Further, anything further, Mr. Testart? Nothing further. Anything further to preamble? To preamble, does the committee agree? Agree. Okay, thank you. We will now return to the bill number and title. Bill 39, Environmental Rights Act. Does the committee agree? Thank you. 
to the bill as a whole. Does committee agree? As amended. Oops, sorry. As amended. Sorry, once again, uh, the bill as a whole. Does committee agree? Okay, thank you. Does committee agree that Bill 39, Environmental Rights Act, is now ready for consideration in Committee of the Whole? Mr. McNeely. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I move Bill 39, Environmental Rights Act, be reported to the Assembly as ready for consideration in Committee of the Whole as amended and reprinted. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Motion is in order. To the motion. Question. Question has been called. All those in favor? Thank you. All those opposed? The motion is passed. The motion is carried. Bill 39, Environmental Rights Act, will be reported to the Assembly as ready for consideration in Committee of the Whole as amended and reprinted. I want to thank you, Minister. Thanks to your officials. And do you have any closing remarks? Thank you, Mr. Chair. And we appreciate Committee's time. And, and as always, we appreciate all the work that's gone into the development of some of these bills. And, and uh, we look forward to having uh, further discussion in Committee of the Whole. Thank you. Thank you, Minister. And I want to thank everyone else who is coming here this afternoon. And with that, we can be adjourned. Thank you.